I need to ask you a question. Are you dealing with pain and need some guidance? Are you suffering from a knee problem but needing answers? Is this just a needless introduction? Question for you. If you have knee pain and it came out of nowhere, do you really have a knee problem? The reason why I ask is because knee pain diagnoses only describes where the problem is. It doesn't say where it's sourced from. So something like a patellar tendonitis or runner's knee or arthritis or just tendonitis, bursitis, sprain strain, none of these things truly identify what the cause is. And if you have knee pain out of nowhere, why is, how is it a sprain strain or an overuse or tendonitis? It doesn't really make sense. So we're gonna go through how to self-assess to figure out is your knee pain truly a knee problem? Because the last thing you wanna do is waste your time scrolling through uh, Instachat or the face um, Googles. <laughs> that was funny. That was actually funny. We'll blooper that at the end. But. Through social media, looking for the 10 quick fixes for knee pain when it's not really a knee problem. I'm Dr. RJ Burr of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. Needless to say, at Reach, we provide sports chiropractic, massage therapy, and plenty more to southeastern Detroit, Plymouth, Michigan, and surrounding suburbs. As you know, pain is frustrating, and Reach takes the guesswork out of healing so that you can do more than just relieve pain, you can become unstoppable. Make sure to like this video if you enjoy this content. Subscribe, hit the little bell dingerlinger so that you get uh, updates of when we send out new videos. All right, so we're gonna dive just right in. If you don't have a knee injury, but you have knee pain, we wanna make sure we're looking at other areas. For example, the hip or even the back. Yes, it's possible to have lingering knee pain coming from the back. Even if you don't have back pain, we've seen it before. Mm -hmm. So what's really important to do is self-assess. Um, a quick self-history you can take. Uh, patterns we often see that are back problems that can be causing knee pain is first, yes, there's no knee injury mechanism. You didn't fall, you didn't trip, you didn't get, um, Hit by a bus. you didn't get a roundhouse kick into the knee or whatever it may be. Um, if you have this random knee pain, say when you're sitting down or when you stand up, you have that old man feeling when you stand up, oh, my back's kind of stiff. If you have back pain and knee pain at the same time, that's a big one. Any previous history of back problems with, with no back pain but lingering knee problems, just when you're not even using your leg, you can feel knee pain at random times and it is pretty random. It just don't really know when it happens. That could be coming from your back. Now with true knee issues, or what's called like a knee derangement of the joint, um, you will see obstruction of normal range of motion. That means some stiffness. So if typically you can move your leg like this, heel to butt, straighten it out, this may feel stiffer, where, uh, right? And you can't straighten it out all the way. And there was something that, there was an injury mechanism. So meaning maybe you're walking down the street and you kind of rolled your ankle and caught yourself. Um, or you fell down, or you had some sort of trauma, that would explain a true knee joint issue. However, you still can get a knee joint issue without any typical injury mechanism, so we still wanna make sure we're self-assessing. So how do we do this self-assessment process? So the easiest thing to do is look for a loss of normal range of motion and pain associated with it. So we're gonna look at the back and as well as the knee. So for the back, a quick one we can do is go reach to the toes, do a back bend, shift from side to side. If any of these feel uh, kind of stuck, like I go this way uh, and kind of and it hurts, we want to look at the back as being a potential source. For the knee, we want to look more as functional tests. So if we squat or do a, a lunge on either side and that provokes that knee pain, we can use that as a baseline test. Also range of motion, pulling your heel to butt or straighten your knee out, okay? Now, if you don't have any knee issues with those tests, but you have some back stiffness, we may want to start with the back. If you don't have any back issues, but you have some knee stiffness issues with those knee tests, we may want to, may want to start with the knee. However, it doesn't hurt to start with the back just to check just in case. So let's say it hurt doing a toe touch and doing a squat. The toe touch bothered my back, the squat bothered my knee. Um, the knee one's more important because we're having knee pain, but we're going to use both those baseline tests. Let's keep it stupid simple. We're going to do a simple standing back bend. Right, so just Vegas odds alone, we tend with back problems, tend to respond to back bending because we spend so much of our day in a forward position. So what you do here is take your hands, put them behind the back, find those bony prominences here called your SI joints, move those thumbs just above to more of that soft muscly area. Then from here, we're gonna support our pelvis, push the hips forward, lean back, and if you can go all the way, then breathe out. 
you'll sink into it a little bit more. If you're clenching your butt for dear life, just push your, push your toes in just a little bit and that will help you relax the glutes as you lean back. Now, if you have some pain with this, say you go back and it's ah, right? Don't force it. There's obviously a back problem there, but you don't want to force through it. You want to think Goldilocks zone, not too much, not too little, just right. So we want to just kiss the pain. Just give it a little right there, right? A little kiss the pain. Or if that's too much, just touch the pain. But you want to make sure not to, ah, you don't want to French kiss the pain. Don't go in too fast, okay? All right, so you want to do that about 10 repetitions every three to four hours or so. Give it a couple days. After each set, just recheck your baselines. Do a toe touch, do a squat, and see if you're getting any change. Because if you're getting change in your knee from doing that, we know that this may be sourced from your back, either fully or partially. Okay. Next is to look at the knee. So let's say we went through this back thing, you know, a couple days, it's done nothing to the knee. Or maybe you just have a really stiff knee and you know how you hurt it. Well, let's work on focusing on the knee first. Now, typically with knee problems, we lose some range of motion and flexion and extension, and then typically some sort of functional tests like squatting or lunging can be an issue. So let's say we have a problem with ah, flexion and ah, squatting, right? Almost oh, we'll do lunging this time, lunging, there we go, that way. Um, the real simple first thing we can do is drive the knee into extension. We tend to lose extension, so we wanna move it in that direction. So a very simple thing to do is take a seat, kick the affected leg out, and first, if you can't straighten it out all the way, it's a really good sign that we have a lack of our obstruction there that we need to move through. So first thing we'll do is straighten the knee, take the hand, and then give it a little nudge. If it hurts, that's okay. That means there is a problem there, and we need to move through that gently, just like the back. Not too much, not too little, just right. So I'm just going to give this some simple pressure going perpendicular to my knee. I'm going to press straight down, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. If it hurts, kiss the pain. Um, same idea. Uh, with this, you can do maybe 20 reps is fine, but again, every uh, three to four hours or so, you want to repeat this. Now, if that's tolerable uh, and you can tolerate standing, and the knee is a, is a load-bearing joint, obviously. right? We don't walk on our hands. Most people don't. Uh, but we walk on our legs, so our knees are commonly load-bearing. Load so we want to bring it to that state. So uh, once it's tolerable, we want to put some weight into that affected leg, my right leg here. So I'm going to shift my weight about 90% on this, and I'm simply going to push my knee back toward the opposite wall here. I'm gonna straighten it out. Now if this hurts again, just kiss the pain. But if you can straighten out all the way, you wanna squeeze that quad and really push it back that way. So now I'm load bearing and driving my knee into extension, restoring that range of motion. I'll do about 20 at a time. Once I'm done, I'm gonna recheck. What were our tests? Flexion, right? And then the lunge. Test for any change. Right? We're just looking not for a miracle, we're looking for small changes to give us evidence that's truly a knee problem and we should spend time looking on the knee. Okay. Now here's a kicker. You can have both. You can have back and the knee, or you may have a hip component. So if you're struggling to figure this stuff out, quit trying to do it yourself. Stop watching this video. Go to reachchiro.com, book your appointment now. So if you're in the area of, of south, southeastern Detroit, the suburbs, Plymouth, Michigan, we can help you thoroughly assess and figure out where your problem is coming from. We'll help you get to the source of the problem so that we're truly correcting the issue, but then also teaching you the strategies you need to do to maintain that success so that you can do more than relieve pain, be unstoppable. Remember, subscribe, follow us, like this video for more content. Check out our social media channels at Reach Rehab Cairo and go to reachcairo.com for more great content. trying to be serious. So if I laugh, laugh, I know you'll laugh. Yes, so. but that's good. People like it.